Hey folks, welcome back to another episode. A bit of a unique video today in that I have been testing out a piece of kit that I've never really seen before. It's a very innovative piece of kit and I wanted to show you guys. I'm actually enjoying using it over the past few weeks. So it is essentially a hatchet and an ax all in one with interchangeable pieces. Now I know that's gonna alarm a lot of you and it did with me too and I am still at the product testing phase. But it's by the guys at Agawa. They make the folding Boreal saw that I've used through tons of my videos before. They have different length versions of the bow saw that you can fold out and it fits into a kind of long tube-like Cordura case like this. I really rate that saw, it's a fantastic saw. Uh, I've got a number of their models on that. I'm sure a lot of you guys use them too. So in terms of a brand, they're a really decent Decent company, I think. So this is a really interesting concept. So this is how it came to me. You can see it's got a sheath on the hatchet there. You pop it open. In one pocket, you have the extended handle for when you want to turn it into a forest ax. And then as it is here, you have the short hatchet. So that is the concept. It's a two piece hatchet ax combination with this attaching mechanism here, which I'll show you. I have personally never seen this before, but this is the sheath it comes in. A nice leather sheath, the little logo there, and that logo is actually where the pop rivet is to open it. Pop catch. And there's the, the bit itself, the ax head. So it's, a, it's an interesting concept, you know, you've got this composite plastic handle here, which you do get in a lot of small kind of hatchets these days you do get the composite handles you can see you've got the kind of primary bevel here and then there is actually a secondary bevel i can see just along here so they've had to come up with a design that's going to be swung pretty hard for the uh, small forest axe style work of the big chopping big wood and then the finer stuff of the hatchet for the the, the kind of kindling work and the, the cheek parts here kind of divot in the pole here is uh kind of squared off, which I quite like in a lot of, certainly hatchets, because I, I whack in a lot of posts for camp building. So I quite like that. And there's the sort of touch mark logo there. So that's the, the kind of axe itself. I'll leave all the details below in terms of the, the actual specs and weight of it all. But that is the hatchet. I reckon about 14 inches, 14 to 16, no, 14 inches probably. Now this is how you extend it into a 26 inch forest axe, let me show you. So what you've got is you've got these clips just here, each side, and they, they bend out. They're on a spring, they're like spring loaded clips. And they just bend out like that. So you get your axe, your extended handle, and it goes up to about there and then you can't push it any further. So what you do is you just lift up the clips each side. There's a, there is a little tool you can use to do this, but I just do it with my hands there. And then it's a case of just pushing it together and clipping each one, making sure these are clipped over. So there's one, it makes a click, and then the other, click. That's now ready to use as a small forest axe. That's 26 inches there. So it's gone from a hatchet to an axe, just like that. The other thing is you can't really get these clips off with your fingers. It's really quite tricky. In fact, I don't think I can do it, which is, which is a good thing, because it means that this is all locked in and secure. And so what Agora have done is they've provided, it almost looks like a bottle cap, bottle opener, sorry, but they've provided this little metal thing here, tool, which you can open up, pull out the sheath, it's stored in the sheath, and you come down to these clips, and you just place it in the gap and pull, and it pops these off. There's one. Put it in the gap, pull, and that's how quick you can take it apart, which I think it is very cool. And then that pops off and then it's the hatchet. So again, the, in terms of design features, it's very unique. And I, I like it because of that in terms of the, at least these guys are being innovative and trying something really, really new and cool. Now I know you guys, I know my audience fairly well, I'd say. And here are, here are my areas of concern. Look guys, Agawa haven't sent me this or paid me and endorsed me to, to sell loads of their axes they've not done that what they've done is they said mike we've come up with this design we want you to get out there and test it as much as possible and let us know your thoughts and that's exactly what i'm doing i said to them yep that's totally fine i'll test it out but obviously i'm going to be letting people know the things i like about it and the things i don't like about it that's only fair right so from my perspective when i initially 
got given this was the, the alarm bells were ringing over the join here, right? Because anything, any, any tool that has multiple parts or the more kind of interchangeable parts a tool has, the, the, the kind of weaker the spots are on that tool and the more chances are of that tool potentially breaking. And so that was my main area of concern is how does a tool such as an axe, which is used with quite a lot of force and power, how is it going to cope when it's got a join that's held together by two clips? So that was my first concern. My second concern was with the handle itself. It's not actually a solid handle, so it's hollow. So this is hollow tube all the way through here. Again, I was like, mm, okay, that's a bit strange to have a hollow tube all the way through here when I'm so used to using your standard kind of Scandinavian style forest axes, which have a solid wood handle. Same with the, the uh, hatchets as well. I'm used to solid wood handles. So from my perspective, it was new to me. Um, and then the last thing that was, again, another little concern that just popped into my mind was how the axe head was attached like that. I've never seen that before. Um, it's just, you know, it's a concept I'm not used to. So I'm just being totally honest with you guys. And obviously I'm being totally honest with Agawa. Having used this for a few weeks now, I am actually quite surprised. I, I thought something here would give with lots of use. And so far with regular use, it hasn't given yet at all. Uh, the head has stayed on, which is really important because that's you know the most important part but the the hollow handle hasn't phased me at all and actually what it does being hollow is it it saves so much on weight when this this is a lot lighter than my forest axe my normal forest axe is but it's still got enough weight in this head certainly at the back end here that pushes that weight through that splitting wood is, is really quite pleasurable with this um i like the design of the axe head itself the concept of going from a 14 inch or roughly 14 inch hatchet to a 26 inch axe with the same axe head is pretty mind blowing. So I think in that, in terms of that, it's really quite unique. I like the feel of the handle itself and swinging it. So it's nice hooked kind of swell, is it called of the axe handle? I can't remember, but I really like that. That's much needed, especially when you're coming down and swinging quite hard on, on the logs. That for me is really nice. The handle itself feels kind of grippy. And you, you, I don't feel like it's out of control. This is hatchet mode. It's still obviously really sharp where it's only a few weeks old. So it splits down the middle, no problem. I often split wood like this too. It splits well how you want it to. I mean, it's got that type of profile that it would be quite good to do feather sticks with. Yeah, see it's got, I knew it would be because it's got a really nice profile for this type of stuff. Personally, I don't tend to do feather sticks with an with an axe or a hatchet, I just, I've got a bushcraft knife for that. But for those of you guys who carry axes more than, and use an axe more than any other tool, it, it's safe to say it can do feather sticks really quite, quite well. I mean, from like a survival perspective, if an axe, if I only had an axe or a hatchet and it's able to make feather sticks like this if they can take if it can make feather sticks and the curls fine enough for them to take a spark from a ferro rod for me that's a that's a big tick that's a really big sort of benefit for me, I'm looking at these curls now and I know they're already going to be good enough to take a spark from a ferro rod but it's like I say I don't I've got a, I personally use a bushcraft knife for this type of stuff but it's good to know that this because of the profile of the blade on this it can actually still make curls fine enough if I was in a bit of a pinch and either I'd lost my knife or something in the woods dropped it which can happen there is fire
A lot of my hatchet work is splitting like this when I'm doing kindling for camping and overnights. This is what I'm doing a lot of the time. It's probably the most used way of using a hatchet for me. And this is pine, so it's pretty twisty. But look how thin you can get it. You can do proper thin bits. Another way of doing feather sticks is having your hatchet in a log like that or your axe, obviously keeping well away from the blade. And then you can grab a, a piece of kindling or whatever you want and just pull the, uh, it's, a, it's a much more controlled way of making a feather stick with an axe or a hatchet. Pull the piece of wood towards you, you're away from the blade and so you've got less risk of cutting yourself. Oh, I just cut those off, those curls there, nothing annoying. But you can see, once you get the angle right, like that, you can just make loads of little curls. And it's the, it's the best way I've found of if you need to make a, a nice feather stick, a decent thin one, with an axe or a hatchet, it's the easiest way of doing it. Because trying to control a two pound head or a one and a half pound head is a lot harder pushing down on it than it is to just hold a piece of light stick and make really fine curls. That's pretty good though, look at that. There you go. It's a pretty good feather stick for a hatchet, right? I've mostly been testing it for chopping wood, obviously. It's the primary use of an axe for a hatchet, but I'm doing it this way. I reckon some of these curls are better than what I could do with my knife. Super fine curls. But what you have to be careful of is, let me just do this, is this, you never really should leave an axe or a hatchet with any part of the blade sticking out in a log because if anyone brushes past it or your dog or something like that, it's all exposed. So personally, I, I wouldn't leave it like that. So it makes feather sticks no problem with nice fine curls, really fine curls, some of those. And obviously it splits kindling, no problem, which is what you want your hatchet, hatchet to do. But let me show you it in ax mode. Tell you what, it's not actually a bad way of doing it, it's sticking it in the log like that and pushing the handle in this way. Don't know why I didn't think of that before. It's all a lot more controlled. Click. Click, and just like that, we have a small forest axe. Let's split some wood. There you have it folks that is an overview not a review just an overview of this very unique well uniquely designed axe slash hatchet combo my overall initial impressions were a, were a slight worry about the joints the joins and the hollow handle so the overall concept of this and the way it connects to turn a hatchet into an axe uh, is certainly i think really appealing for those people who like to do canoeing and kind of long distance trips but can never decide whether to take a lighter kind of hatchet or a heavier axe depending on what wood you want to process but also it could be a situational based thing where if you're potentially i guess hot hot tenting or camping in the winter where you need your large axe really to split a lot of firewood but then when you split all your main firewood and you only need kind of smaller kindling when the wood stove's going in your tent that's where a hatchet kind of comes in more handy. So the fact is, is that what they've done is really unique. They've created a concept where you have an ax and a hatchet and yet 
the weight is not compromised in terms of having to carry something that's heavier. You can, uh, you can carry something that's lighter but still can do the job of a heavier axe. And I think it's really unique. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing to test this out. Uh, I think they've just launched this, I believe, on a Kickstarter campaign. So they're going to launch it on Kickstarter. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description below. But again, this is just an overview. It's not a review. For me, it's too early to review it. But I know there's going to be people out there who, who are really, this will appeal to. And it's uh, certainly it appeals to me and for what I do and the things that I do. I use quite a few axes and hatchets and I still kind of rotate through them and use the various ones. Uh, it's certainly going to have a place in, in my kit on certain trips. So thanks to the guys at Agawa for sending me it. That is my opinion, folks, on the Agawa ADK26. So far, so good to be continued, as they say. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all your support. And I'm sure this, this is going to cause a lot of comments and discussion, certainly down in the comments section below. So uh, if you guys have used this before, let me know what your thoughts are. And to those of you who are looking to use it, drop a comment. Let's get some conversation started down below and we'll see where it goes. But if you want more details, a lot more of the tech specs, then head on over to the Kickstarter. I'll put it in the description below. Thanks, guys. Catch you in the next one.